Something happened here. Something vicious and cruel. And no one got out alive. Not even you. Welcome back to the Upload VR Showcase Summer Edition sponsored by Moss. Now today I have Andreas from Fast Travel Games. Say hi, Andreas. Hi. So uh, one of the biggest announcements of the show this year was Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife, a new game from your studio. Um, I know that you are personally very, very excited about this game. Tell me a bit about why. I am. I am. I mean, I've been playing horror games since, well, Slaughterhouse and those 2D kind of arcade-ish games before, before Polygon graphics became a thing. But of course, with the first Resident Evil and then onwards, I've been basically playing all horror games that have come out on the market. And with VR, horror has really upped itself a notch, I think, in terms of scares and immersion. And, you know, actually being able to finish a game is kind of tough sometimes in VR because it's it's so scary. And I'm... Yeah, and I love horror movies. I read horror novels. I'm just a horror buff, really. And and uh, so this is really a dream project for me. I haven't, I haven't been as excited about a game bringing a game to market than uh, this game. Yeah. So this this is set in the universe of World of Darkness. That's right. That is correct. Yes. And yes. that that is a kind of tabletop universe traditionally that's kind of split into these kind of monster factions people will probably know uh, vampire masquerade the bloodlines i think i think is what it's called yep. um, but this is so this is not only the first vr game set in that universe i think i'm right in saying it's the first one based on the the wraith side of it as well yeah is exactly that, it's, yeah, yeah it's true it's the first ever video game based on wraith the oblivion and uh, as you mentioned the first ever vr game uh in the world of darkness which we're so happy to be the studio who gets to make. Yeah. T talk to me a bit about what like a, a wraith is essentially, because I think, you know, vampires and werewolves, I think a lot of people get that straight away, but a wraith, I think, comes with a kind of load of different supernatural connotations. That is true. I mean, you could say they're kind of spirits, but they're actually not referred to as spirits. Uh, what they are basically uh, is uh, an entity that is trapped between the living world and uh, the afterlife, so to speak. So in this game, uh, you will actually have died. Uh, mm -hmm. I won't spoil how, because it's quite a big thing uh, to reveal and understand what actually happened in the game, but you are dead, really. And as a wraith, you are sort of stuck in the afterlife before being able to transcend uh, from being dead. Uh, and most wraiths have a reason or two or more uh, to as to why they are stuck in in this uh, this uh, in between world between uh, life and, and afterlife. So that's really what a wraith is. Uh, it's kind of a spirit entity, uh, and it also comes with specific wraith powers that we will reveal a bit more later on. But you know your you as a player will, will play the game as a wraith and uh, try to figure out the mystery inside a massive modern mansion called Barclay Mansion while understanding what it, what it means to be a wraith. And doing all this in, in VR is just, it's just an amazing feeling. So the entire game's going to be set within that mansion? Um, yeah, as much as I can reveal right now, the mansion is very centered, centric to the whole experience. Uh, it's called the Barclay Mansion, and we will reveal more details later, but something happened there, something really, really vicious and cruel, and uh, it's up to you to understand what happened and uh, solve some other horrifying mysteries along the way. Uh, it's very narrative-driven as well, so you'll get the story unwrapped, so to speak, as, as play and, and uh, explore more of this mansion. Mm. Um and uh, you mentioned Resident Evil earlier as like one of the big VR, uh, the big horror games for you. Obviously, one of the great things about Resident Evil is is owning that mansion and knowing uh, which rooms to go back and forth between and solve puzzles. Is there that kind of element to the game? You think? Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. I mean, it, it has that kind of you find a new power or you level up a power and then you can go back and maybe open a door that you couldn't before. Uh, 
we try to add, you know, we're, we're saving a lot of information about the game until later, uh, but we're trying to add optional things to do in the game as well. So it's it's not necessarily a one straightforward, you know, road from the start to finish. Uh, you will actually be rewarded by for exploring the mansion and taking your time inside the game and, and, and really trying to dig deep in the different mysteries that are inside the mansion. So I think, um, you know, our creative director uh, has referenced games like Amnesia, The Dark Descent and Alien Isolation um, as sort of inspirational uh, sources for what we're trying to make here. It's, it's that kind of narrative driven um, experience uh, where you're not necessarily, you know, a power fantasy. You won't go in, go guns blazing, or you know, you, you can't just run over uh, the specters or the ghosts inside a mansion. You have to use caution and uh, wits, of course, and intelligence, and really understand the surroundings, and sometimes even hide from the from the dangers as well. So, I'd say those two games are are inspirational sources for us when we when we set out to make this game. So I guess just wrapping up then, this is your first horror game like, uh, as a studio. Where could, would you estimate right now on a scale of one to 10, the kind of horrors you're going for? Is it going to be like the full on 10, going to be having nightmares about this or is it going to be a bit more balanced or, or, or what do you think? Let me put it like this. We have some issues now with the uh, quality assurance in the studio because people refuse to play it. Right. Okay, cool. Uh, luckily, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm bold and brave and I'm used to these kind of games. So I, I play a lot. Uh, but it, it's going to be a very, very horrifying game. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that, you know, some people will see it as a challenge to actually finish it. Okay. or even, even try it out. Uh, but there is so much value in it. And it's not, we're not making this, you know, jump scare filled, uh, um, you know, light experience or, you know, the cheap kind of horror. That's not what we're aiming for here. This is a more under your skin horror that, mm. you know, you won't necessarily be frightened all the time, but you most likely won't ever feel completely safe either. And, you know, progressing slowly and understanding your environments, understanding what it means to be a wraith and how to tackle all these uh, challenges in, in, in the shape of other ghosts and stuff inside the mansion will be really key for how well you'll be able to play the game. Mm. Um, yeah. No, we're so excited about this. I mean, we, we, there are some parts, you could argue, in, in budget cuts. Uh, the first one, but also the second one, that are quite, you know, similar to a horror game. Yeah. Where some sure. some players are actually afraid when playing that. So I think, and even Apex Construct has uh, certain elements of a more horrifying um, yeah. experience or environment, even though it's not a horror game. But but this is a game we've been make, wanting to make for a long, long time, and uh, luckily enough, we started a dialogue with Paradox Interactive uh, last year, and mm. they, were, they were eager to expand on the world of darkness uh, with the first ever Wraith game. And we had proven ourselves, I think, to be good at making narrative-driven games. And of course, we're very close to each other in Stockholm, so it was a natural dialogue to start. And uh, they loved our pitch for the idea, for the, for the game. So that's how it started. Super exciting. Cool. So you uh, are going to be showing a the first gameplay trailer later this summer, that's right? Correct. So yeah. what we shown during the showcase was the basically the you could you could call it a teaser announcement. Uh, it's us announcing the fact that we're making Wraith of Live and Afterlife and the fact that it's a horror game and, and certain elements about the setting. But in August, uh, during Gamescom Now, which is now a digital event, we will be premiering with the first gameplay trailer um, in mixed reality as well. So that's something to really look forward to. Uh, it's not that far away now. So just going to take some vacations first. And <laughs> yes. To get back I to think that. I might need one as well after watching that trailer. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's good. Cool. All right, Andreas, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, stay with Upload. We'll have yet more interviews coming right up.
Cool. Thanks for having me. Cheers.